Okay, first of all, let us thank the organizers uh, for like this second half of the program that was like half canceled in 2020 for uh, I don't know what reasons, nobody knows. Uh, especially thanks to Thomas who is not here for making me first preparing a blackboard talk <laughs> because he wanted to understand what I'm saying. And he explicitly, explicitly asked me several times. <laughs> yes, yes, that's, that's why I'm saying that, that's precisely for him. To not put his photos in my talk, and I think that's why he forced a blackboard talk on me. But last year, <laughs> there was a talk that was recorded. So if you want to see pictures of Thomas, <laughs> go to this Schrodinger website, Go to the talk and it starts with it. <laughs> okay. Now, as mentioned, last year we were here with the program that Alexei organized and we started cleaning up some things in uh, graded geometry. So this is what we are going to talk about today. Uh, and uh, we also prepared a joke one year ago because this paper is actually called uh, the category uh, of Z graded manifolds, no surprise so far. What happens if you do not? Stay positive. <laughs> but Thomas will not know it because he is positive. Uh, and my part of the <laughs> sorry, my part of the talk will be mostly about that. So I will talk about uh, like. Can you read here? Parse. I think I turned on everything. So I will talk about Z graded vector spaces and manifolds, uh, especially about functional spaces on, on, on them. So what are the functions on the graded manifold? And uh, kind of to tell you why this is a little bit tricky, but not super tricky in contrast to super manifolds that you probably have all heard about and graded manifolds which are often n-graded manifolds, so like functional spaces, spaces. Uh, and uh, that will normally be accessible to people. So even if you have never done graded geometry, if you are starting your PhD and you just have heard some words, you should probably be able to follow. And if you don't interrupt me, uh, ask questions. Then there are more, maybe not com more complicated, but more kind of conceptual things about some algebraic definitions there. So algebraic, or maybe it's better to say intrinsic, because that will be kind of coordinate dependent definitions and if uh, I'm efficient enough, I will introduce them in details. If not, I will give a flavor of it. So the key word here is filtrations. This is how you would describe these functional spaces in some kind of more algebraic, more clean and less coordinate dependent way. And then in the end of the day, I will at least state, maybe again, have some idea of a proof of what you might call a bachelor bachelor theorem in the Z graded case again. Uh, and I don't guarantee this 100%, uh, but I guess Alexei would continue using some of this discussion, some of these constructions in the Z graded 
algebraic setting, so Z graded graded groups and algebras, uh, I suppose, right, then there were some constructions related to Poincaré Birkhoff Witt theorem in the setting. Uh, eventually, Harish Chandra bears with protest if it's not the case. And I guess the end of the day would be uh, you introduce differential to all of this. Uh, and there will be some integration result of the differential graded Lie groups and differential graded Lie algebras. Yes, no? Huh? Yeah, okay, I mean, at least without the D, but also if time permits, though we should keep the timing. And you see there are these three uh, archive links, and we actually started writing this guy, and this is the end of the story somehow. And then we realized that it could be generalized more or less for free from N-graded case to Z-graded case. And we started writing this. And then were again some technicalities that ended up being a separate text about this thing. So actually, the papers you should read somehow in this order, like this one, and this one, and then this one, right? <laughs> yeah, and they should have been written in that order, but since we are organized uh, and, you know, academic and pedantic and everything, when we understand something, we, yeah, 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 and maybe they should include more people, obviously, right? Some of them should have, could have included more authors, but they sort of uh, didn't want to. I mean, the tricky part is this. Uh, and when, when we understood it, we were a little bit lazy to write up other things, and we had needed some motivation to kind of clean up the mess. So now I'm going to do the other way around. I will create the mess here, and then Alexei will clean it up in the next hour. Okay? Um, so, are you fine up to now? <laughs> okay. Uh, I suppose in the audience you have heard about super manifolds and graded manifolds, but let me just like to warm up the room. Uh, when you talk about super manifolds, uh, what you usually say, you look at super vector spaces, right, and they look like the direct sum of uh, even and odd parts. And when you look at coordinates on the zero part, when you multiply them, you stay inside. You look at coordinates here, you multiply them, you go to that part, right? Very classical story. And uh, so you have some kind of multiplication rules. And you have also some parity rules that uh, will be responsible for commutations, right? So commutation. Commutation <coughs> relations uh, are governed by some parity. So if you have <coughs> two super objects and then you try to permute them, then there is a sign appearing here. And at least in this talk, it will be the, uh, so this guy will be just minus one to P of A, P of B. So as soon as I'm talking about some odd or even coordinates, this is what it means, okay? And now if you look at, uh, if you look at the functions on that, you probably understand what could be the most general thing. Right? On the uh, even part, you allow your favorite functions from high school, like smooth or analytic or whatever, right? And here, uh, you don't have much choice, right? You, more or less, you have to stick to polynomials, right? And even those polynomials, they 
uh, couldn't be of too high degree, right? Because when coordinates start repeating here, they square to zero, right? They, this, they are supposed to anti-commute, so they square to zero. I probably, I don't need to write this, but if you have never heard about supergeometry, this is that, okay? Uh, and also in this talk, my work will be smooth. Uh, maybe Alexei is too, maybe not, I don't know. It depends if Chin Chan asks about examples. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sorry, sorry. All my jokes were intended to mock Thomas. He's not in the room, you are the next, the, the next organizer. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what, what are the functions on that? There are like polynomials in these variables uh, with smooth coefficients in these variables. Knowing that these guys, okay, kind of defined because I can always say I take a coordinate here and I add a combination of odd coordinates to it so that it stays even, right? So I'd, like I take a product of two coordinates here and I add it, add it here and I kind of still compute the smooth function out of it. But then what I can do, I can make the Taylor expansion of it and that Taylor expansion will stop very soon, like at the first term, because the second term, the coordinates will be repeating. So that vanishes. Okay, you can think about this like that. So this, this f of uh, v, or maybe I can also say about manifolds, but that will come. So f of v are like uh, Taylor series, Taylor series theory as in the one variables that stop soon. And uh, since Chin Chang asked for examples, the most, no, 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 I, I'm moving, no, okay, I'm joking. No, so, no, huh? I'm moving on, no, 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 it, it was fine. No, uh -huh. Okay, fair, fair, okay, then, then the, usual, the usual examples would be the shifted tangent bundle to some smooth manifolds and uh, also super vector bundles, right? So this one would be like often not denoted like this. And then there is, since I mentioned in bachelor theorem here, the bachelor theorem here says that all super manifolds are non-canonically look like that, okay? Now, the same thing works in the n-graded world. Now, the only difference is that n graded world is that this is now starting from d0 and then continues. It may stop or not, depends on your conventions, right? And already here you see that, that the functional space is more interesting. So the whole commutation business kind of goes the same way. And again, it doesn't have to be that way, but in this talk, I will say that the parity of an element is always the degree of the element modulo two, but it's not absolutely necessary. The only thing that you need here is that there is some way to associate the commutation relation to your graded object. But now when you have this, you realize that uh, every, uh, every odd uh, vector subspace here, the coordinates on that, they, they square to zero, so they don't produce series. And even coordinates in principle could produce series. So these Taylor expansions would not stop. But if you fix the total degree, they do, right? So again, the reasonable functional space would be like polynomials in all this, with smooth coefficients here, okay? So reasonable functional space here would be polynomial in V greater than zero with smooth coefficients uh, on V zero. And again, I'm skipping the, the shift and the manifolds and blah, blah. 
Uh, the analog of the bachelor theorem, bachelor Tversky theorem, would be the result of Gimma Reutenberg that says that uh, a graded manifold can be viewed as a tower of at least of finite degree here, can be viewed as a tower of uh, this, right, where all of the, all of, so that the, the, the tower of bundles where all of them are fine. So this is kind of the, the canonical uh, structure of, uh, of the n-graded manifold, okay? Now, this was a reminder that you probably know. And already here, you understand what could get, go wrong if you go to really Z-graded vector spaces. So, Z-graded vector spaces, this V now will be longer. It can, in principle, start uh, minus infinity, and then I, okay, I have some notations there, just like that, minus L minus L, DL, et cetera, D minus one, D minus one. And there I will put zero at least for the moment. And then there will be D one, D one plus D, K, D, K. No, nobody forbids you to look at the most general thing here. So what changed to that thing, I added the negative part, and I said that the zero part is for the moment trivial. Then the, the, the same story goes on. You have degrees, you have commutations, relations, all this, blah, blah. Uh, uh, we introduce some vocabulary. I don't know how like um, common it is, but it's convenient. So we would call a Z graded vector space or manifold later uh, of finite degree if this thing actually stops in both directions. So if uh, Okay, let me write it like this. I, I in Z without zero, if I is less than infinity, then of finite graded dimension, if all the dimensions of my vector spaces are finite here, if all the i are finite, and uh, just of finite, like, yeah, just of finite dimension, of finite dimension, if both of them are true. So you see, you, you have two sources of troubles. You can either have uh, this this series of vector spaces that doesn't stop, and uh, or you can have some of them that uh, are of infinite dimension. And both of them kind of happen in real life, right? Not when you start with it, but when you look, for example, at uh, maps between them and you want to look at the degrees of maps. There it didn't happen, because if you wanted to form a polynomial of some fixed degree from a bunch of positive degree uh, monomials, positive degree coordinates, this is always finite. Here, no. Uh, and okay, I omitted the zero here, but I, I could actually have put it 
here, let me put it in a different color, select the zero, and then <coughs> I can introduce the same words uh, for the whole thing. Okay, and then this guy would be an open subset in some regular usual RN. Okay, so I can in principle introduce all these words also there. It's probably not the best idea because at least in the zero part, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, things happen. So like in real life, not very often you have this sort of finite dimension when you look at Yeah, okay, exactly. The question is, uh, f first of all, what is, what is a re reasonable, uh, a reasonable functional space on, uh, let's say, a graded space, right? U where now U is some U0, the smooth part, plus this white, white V. Uh, reasonable, as you say, from categorical perspective. So from categorical perspective. <clears throat> so you, you mean that uh, you want to describe some functions and you want also to see how things map to each other. And like at least the first, maybe the most, the longest part of my talk would be um, to describe this <coughs> and the natural thing to consider inspired by that would be f of u, uh, Formal power series uh, of V variables, variables with <coughs> smooth coefficients on U zero. Okay, so I want kind of to mimic that. Um, and the theorem that I'm going to state in a strange way now, so the theorem is that f of u is better than you think. So because th this kind of looks ugly, you have to treat formal power series and everything, and Obviously, if you allow the mappings to be of the same form, yes, they survive everything. But this is not a, not like, not, not a construction you want to deal with. There is like a lot of formality in the game. And what I want to uh, show you now is how to, how to construct this kind of coming from the bottom, from simple things, uh, and to see like what fails immediately and what works in the end of the day. Uh, my yeah okay this this guy is in r n an open set yeah 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 and the red thing okay just ignore for the moment maybe ignore forever because because I need to kind of distinguish this part and the degraded part um Yes, absolutely. So, first attempt. First attempt. <coughs> I want uh, to consider P the space of polynomials on V with smooth, okay, maybe a little, let's put some abbreviation on this, like S, P, U. 
but smooth coefficients on u0. Smooth coefficients u0. And the thing which is very easy to see is that this guy does not survive the coordinate transformations of the same form. Right? So P is not stable by coordinate uh, changes of the same form. So this is kind of not what you want because you want closed category. Um, and precisely for the reason you say. So if I take a coordinate change of the form x prime with x plus some psi, psi, maybe to some powers, I don't know, uh, my j, okay, and this will be of some negative degree, and this will be of some positive degree. You can always find those guys, so that these guys of degree zero, right? So, and x is the coordinate system here. Then uh, just a smooth function of this guy will produce a power series that never stops, right? Are you all fine with it? Okay. Then second attempt, take a functional space, let's say F1, which, I know, okay, it's better to spell it in words. I will say there are, uh, they are, Finite, uh, they are finite combinations of polynomials on uh, of polynomials on V. with coefficients, coefficients being formal power series in, again, combinations, finite combinations of degree zero, of, of total degree zero, degree zero. Is it, is it clear what I mean? So I kind of force to allow this. I allow formal power series that take as arguments things of total degree zero and maybe not necessarily the simple ones, but with more terms. Just I want to stay finite, okay? Oh, not, not yet, okay. So I mean, I'm, I'm really forcing the thing that was causing trouble in the polynomials. And now that, uh, that is already a good thing. Yes, Alexei. No, no, Alex. Um, so then the, the, the proposition, which I kind of already motivated, that this guy survives the operation. So this F1 survives the same operations. But what is uh, an even Uh, 
Yeah, so I, I like, yeah. Yeah, okay, so, so here you allow all combinations that fit into degree zero. That will probably come. I, I, don't, I mean, I, if I understand your question co correctly. Yeah, but that, that's... Yes. Yes. Yes, but for... No, but, no, but, no, but then, then, then you put them together. The, 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 yeah, the trick is the trick is you put them together. That forms a degree zero combination, and that can be fit into the series. Yeah, that's that's some kind of trouble. No, no, there are no series in degree non-zero variables, if you want. Yeah, okay, I can try to give an example. Sorry, sorry, can you say it? Ah, yeah, 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 okay, okay, let, let me phrase it in a different way. It's like polynomial, yeah, su sum of monomials. Ah, yeah, okay, if this is the question. Like, like th th think back at the n graded case. You can have like v1 plus v2 v3 plus v4. And all of them you can multiply by a function of v0, each monomial by a different function. This is a finite combination, right? But that finite combination I couldn't squeeze into the Parva series because it's of weird degree. The only kind of combination that I can squeeze into, into the power series are of uh, degree zero. Yeah, but I mean, an example would be a long line of some letters. I don't know if you really want to read it. <laughs> like, like this is permitted, but, um, but if I, if I put But if I put a sum over i, like really in z, what you suggest, like psi minus i, like psi i, this is not yet permitted, although this sort of leaves there. Now I'm cheating here a little bit because this can be viewed is a, is a power series, right? So maybe, maybe I make a statement and it would be more. Okay, may, may, maybe let me write a statement. So. Yeah, so, so the, the, the combination is this, a sum of monomials. Now it degrees, yeah, linear combination is this, but linear in a sense, smooth coefficients, for example. 
Yeah, now, now formal power series. Okay. No, but it's, 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 it's kind of natural that, that it creates confusion because it took us time to understand this. The proposition is, is that this actually gives everything. So I can always take this guy, any fixed degree guy from here and arrange, like make a coordinate change such that it is represented like this, okay? And this is a statement, so kind of, kind of, uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and th this is precisely what I want, like the main message I want to communicate in this part. I don't know if I need to prove it like in real details or maybe just convince you a little bit. Uh, because this is, uh, yeah, th this amounts to some condition on the coefficients of these guys, right? Or on, the, on the powers of these guys. You want to form a fixed degree uh, guy here. What I say is that you can always rearrange the terms in such a way that it is a monomial, it is a polynomial of that degree with coefficients of some degree zero power series, is it? It's a power series, but but inside the power series, it only has finite things. Like this is the, the, the Fontaine equation. So let, let, let me maybe kind of prove it or prove some costs. So I want a function that looks like, I, ta I, I take any function, which looks like some multi indices here, f i j of x for the moment, psi i, psi j. One is negative, one is positive. Yeah, it's kind of not to be coherent with that. Whatever, right? So this is negative degree. This is positive degree. This is a multi index. Uh, and I want to say that uh, these guys of degree D, some fixed degree of C, whatever. So, huh? I mean total degree. So degree of F is some constant number is the same as uh, I scalar product degree of psi plus J degree of uh, psi is equal to C, right? This is like completely clear. And this, what is this? So you, you know these guys, right? This is, this is the uh, number of integers, like a vector of integers. And you want to find these guys. And this is actually a thing which is uh, very well studied. It's uh, the Fontaine equation. So you want integer solutions to this guy that are non-negative. Now, waving hands a little bit. The space of solution of it is a commutative monoid. So it can be represented by finite basis. And this is the basis that you would use there. Yeah, this basis in a sense generators. Is it, is it, more, is it more understandable now? So I take the solutions of this guy and they look as, the, as they uh, look in linear algebra. There is a finite 
number, like finite dimensional, but in the case of uh, integer numbers, it's like just finite, of this guy, of the non-homogeneous guys, plus the infinite uh, like dimensional, but in this case, it's like infinite rank, better to say rank, of the homogeneous part. So this guy equals zero, right? And this guy equals zero is precisely the thing that you can put into series. And the, the, the finite number of solutions of this guy equals C would be the monomials in front of this, okay? I'm not writing this, but like, I guess this is now more, more understandable. Okay? Or if not, okay, protest. I mean, I'm also here to take protest. Be you kind of open the brackets, right? You you had you had the finite number of non non degree non-zero monomials. You multiply them in all the combinations, and the series you just re resum, and they stay series and they stay degree zero. And the degree zero is this, yes. Yeah, you look puzzled, but it's okay. We also looked puzzled for some while. But what is even funnier is that you can make coordinate changes like this. Like multiplication, you sort of believe you open the brackets. But now you can plug series into series. And this survives that. Okay. Okay. I'm Probably not spelling out the morphics, am I? Maybe I am, I don't know. Maybe I am, just to be, just to be consistent with Chin Chan's question. So when you were there, morphisms, they actually look a bit like coordinate changes. Like when you were there, you were permitting the fixed degree uh, coordinate changes. And they looked like, again, some bunch of uh, coordinates that summed up into uh, a fixed degree monomial with smooth coefficients. Like here, it changes a little bit the formula. I'm just taking the notation, right, I hope. So the formula, they will be like three lines. Goodness. Um, you have the usual degree zero part, which starts from the degree zero part of your previous uh, bunch of coordinates or like bunch of uh, generators. Then you have this kind of, again, multi-index combination. Now those guys can be everything, positive and negative. Right, with the condition that I times the degree of theta vector is zero, and what you had before, you obviously had some sums of f i i. I, but this kind of condition, degree of theta given and there is a similar one in the negative part sorry it may sound totally obvious but what I want to say here is so two things uh, when you were in the end case, you didn't have that line and you didn't have this term, 
right? You only had this. And you only had smooth functions here. Uh, now we allowed all of them. And you see this condition is kind of the same as this, right? So the same statement holds. Remark, and I, I, I say it in words, like you can again, you can again absorb all the series into degree zero part. And you will get again finite combinations of those. Maybe now it's a bit more convincing that this guy also survives the, uh, the, the changes. Alexei somehow looks puzzled. Okay. And we introduced the word for it. So kind of we called it semi-formal. Semi-formal. Like you can either look at the, in the full generality, the formal power series and everything, or you can restrict to the formal power series only in degree zero combinations, sorry for using this word again, uh, and all the non-trivial degree now stays polynomial. Okay, are you a little bit ha happier with it? Yes, I have 10 minutes and I'm thinking how am I shortening the intrinsic part. Huh? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I need to introduce some words for, for that. So, um, what is the minimum number of words that I need to introduce? Um, there is, okay, this is very, like, looks at least very coordinate dependent. Now you can look at the algebraic description, and I will probably lose part of the audience now, but I am happy to uh, recover that part of the audience during the coffee break. So algebraic description. Now you look at, uh, you look at, uh, uh, so you, you want to kind of look at the whole space, the whole functional space, and filter it by some well-defined uh, nice objects. And th those would mean what we call filtrations, and this is related to, uh, to, to, to some, wait, do I need green? to graded modules, so graded modules. I look at it now in the purial, purely algebraic way. Uh, these are degree i guys. This uh, can be actually pretty general, but let us stick to z again. Uh, and you define usual things. So you define this, you define the homomorphisms of them, uh, you define duality in the sense that uh, you look at the homomorphisms from those to the base ring, uh, and then you define filtrations. On the filtrations, if some words are not clear, please ask. Uh, you look at this guy. So what are those? Those are the, uh, again, oh, oh, oof, all of those quotiented by the ideal related to the commutations. Yeah. And you define two things. So you define the increasing filtration of it, increasing using filtration of it by for any positive e 
uh, FP of this guy is the graded ideal of symmetric algebras generated by degree at most minus p and then you look at this guy and you define a decreasing filtration of it filtration of it uh, so again so p positive of lower p of the guy uh, which is a graded co-ideal of again symmetric now co-algebras co algebras generated by degree less than p I mean it's a co-algebra with the usual co-multiplication of like one plus something plus like tensor something plus one and then you say that the whole thing is the limit of one by another I don't know it's probably not clear at all what I'm saying but I mean these words are needed to, to state the bachelor and uh, th this construction so you, you take you take the ith component of each of them and you quotient one by another uh, this construction is intrinsic so I no longer need to give you the generators I can stay purely, pure, purely algebraic and the fun thing fact about it that would probably fit in the remaining five minutes if you do fix the generators if you do fix them fix the generators you can look at one part of the thing and the other part of the thing uh, I'm putting a prime here and actually this E prime is either E itself or E star okay and uh, like skipping quite some details here uh, this R in here is the filtration from upstairs uh, and then some of the interesting parts of the functional spaces can be now viewed as quotients of the objects that I draw here, maybe not really explaining them. Uh, for, for example, this R quotient by the first uh, F1 of R would be non-negatively graded negatively graded and obviously you can reverse it to say non-positively graded kind of in a dualizing reverse uh, so this kind of helps you to define intrinsically again the right and the left part and the conclusion like again skipping a lot of details sorry for that uh, if you start from a 
Z graded algebra. Can associate to it uh, canonically using this and N2 graded algebra. Okay, so you can kind of decouple the positive and negative grading in the uh, in the non-artificial way in some kind of uh, well-defined algebraically way and okay if you call this a for example this would we would call a bar and now you apply this to uh, to the sheaf of function on the z graded manifold okay so apply to the sheaf of function on the z graded manifold uh, What will it give? You will first view this all fam like O bar. This is Z, this is M2. And you recover the underlying and two graded manifolds. You would want to see it as the shift of functions and some m bar and this is now this guy is m2 graded okay um, and then there was the thing that i started with this uh, ima rotenberg result canonically meaning that like you don't have to fix coordinates you you, you really look at uh, ideals of functions and ideals okay, if I if I need to make any typos the product should probably survive huh I think so th that's that's why actually this uh, this degree uh, like the, the upper one is degree less than minus P so that the product moves in the correct way and the other one is degree less than p so that again this like for negative things the product moves in the correct way yeah 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 that's an that's an important thing so so this uh, guy is a functor yes yeah yeah ah, yeah okay that's what it is yeah Yeah, yeah, wait, 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 yeah. So what, what Reutenberg says is, is that in the, uh, in the smooth case, that guy, like the, the whole left part, right, is a vector, is a graded vector bundle over M0. And you can apply this twice, for one engrading and for the other engrading. But then that guy is not canonical. So when you, want to for formulate the bachelor result, bachelor sort of result. Um, you would say that M is non-canonically given into uh, um, V plus B minus, and like one of them goes from the end grading of the whole thing, the end, the other one goes from the other end grading of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, like the usual bachelor. Yeah. 